Here's 10 tips I think you should know for Infinite Painter. First up on our list is that your canvas size, if I set it to 2000 and then change it to 200, you can see there that it changes the maximum amount of layers you can have. Pixels does not show DPI, but if we change it to inches, you can see that DPI also shows, and that is also a factor that determines how many layers you can have. And if you set it to 300, which is good for printing, you can see there that the layer count has changed. Now your layer count is determined by how much memory you have in your device, not storage, but RAM of your device. So this is very much device specific. Now, number two on our list is reference images. Now, Infinite Painter allows you to have multiple reference images on a canvas at one time. So I've already got one on my canvas, but if I go up here to the three dots and we go to import, when I tap on import, I can select where I wanna add a photo from. And once I select my photo, I then get an option here to import as a layer or a reference. And if we tap on reference, I'll then get the window that will pop up with my reference image. Now you can actually select colors straight from a reference photo by just dragging your color picker over the top here. And then you can nicely grab multiple colors for your canvas as you go. And when you're done with a reference image, you can just hold down on it and drag it to the cross in the middle and it doesn't affect your canvas in any way. You can carry on with a clean screen. Now number three on our list is actually the option to dock your color wheel. So once you open your colors, you can just use two fingers and drag your color wheel out onto the screen. And you can very easily, quickly jump between different colors. If you are not yet set on your palette, you can do this to nicely grab a whole bunch of colors in a quick go. And just like a reference image, you can hold down with two fingers and drag it to the cross in the middle of the screen, and that will get rid of it. And number four on our list is the option to dock tools. So if we open up our tools, we can hold down, for example, on fill, and then put it into this little toolbar space at the top and you've got the option to add as many as you can fit in that space at the top there by just holding down on a tool and putting it up in that area. And again, when you're done, hold down and drag to the cross in the center of the screen. Now your tools will actually stay there across all different canvases. So you don't need to do this each time for each canvas. Number five on our list is the option to split your tools so they create an edit option. So if we go up to three dots and settings, we can then go ahead and look at the option of interface and we can go ahead and add here the split tools option. And when you turn that on, they will now be separated in your toolbar. So if you don't need to jump between the tabs that normally show there, this is an easier way to get straight to the tools that you need. Number six on our list is the option to grab a color using a gesture. So if we go to our settings again and we scroll down under gestures, we've got the option here for a long press and we can use the option of eyedropper. So now what we can do is when we're in a canvas with some colors, we can hold down on the screen and we can use the color picker. A quick and easy way to grab some colors, but there is a minor little delay here. So what you can in fact do is go up to your settings and you can make this a little bit quicker. So if we go to settings and we go ahead and go down to gestures again, we can go ahead and change the single tap now to the eyedropper and this will be even quicker to grab the colors. It's a lot easier though to have accidental touches. That's why I recommend the long press potentially, but you can do this if you wanna speed it up a little bit more. Now, number seven on our list is the option to show your brush head on the screen. So again, if we go to our settings, and if we scroll down towards the option here, towards the bottom here of brush settings, we can turn on the brush cursor. Now turning that on will allow you to see the head of your brush on your screen. It's really useful if you're trying to color in a particular area and you're not quite sure how big your brush is. Number nine on our list is the option to change the pressure of your pen. So again, if you go to settings and go down in this column, you can change the pressure here of your brush. Now this is by default, but you can change these nodes however you wish. If you're a little bit light-handed and you can't press too firm, you can go ahead and change the pressure like here and you'll be able to add a lot more pressure on the screen in one go. However, if you go ahead and change the pressure back to the default here and just move this node back into the corner, you'll be able to have more variety in your pressure. So some nice thin areas that then build up to the darker areas. So more pressure will allow you to go straight to the bigger size of a brush. Number nine on our list is the option of time lapses. So if you go to the three dots up here under options, you've got recordings and you can see here time lapses is turned on, meaning it has recorded all of your canvas. So starting from start to finish, you'll be able to see how your canvas progressed and you can scrub through the timeline here. And this is really awesome because if you go up to the share option in the top right, you can pick a duration of your clip and then you can go ahead and share it to your favorite apps of choice. Really useful if you wanna share it to Instagram Reels or otherwise TikTok.
And the final one on our list is the option to restore a canvas. So you can go ahead and hold down on a canvas and go to the option of restore, and you'll be able to scroll back through auto saves of your canvas where you'll be able to backtrack to a particular point in your journey. And there we go. There's just a few simple tips on how you can use Infinite Painter to its max. Let me know your favorite tips and tricks in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.